In my husband's family, in the female line, all women have kids out of wedlock. Moreover, all of them are missing official recognition of paternity. The grandmother gave birth to her daughter, the mother of my husband, out of wedlock and while on the run from her strict brothers. The mother of my husband had him while also not married, and we still don't know who the father is and whether she was in love with him or not. My husband's sister had her daughter out of wedlock. The father is unknown. My question is, what does all of this indicate? And why am I convinced that all of my husband's misfortunes and problems in life, as well as a certain restlessness of his, are just links that belong to the chain of problematic lineage. Does the female line determine the fate of this man's child? How can I help him? It is very good, colleague Victoria, that you are so observant. Yes, here we can tell by the symptoms that you have described a definite manifestation of a certain problem that runs along the female line, the female line of your husband. It is good that it isn't yours. But, of course, this could certainly affect you and your son. If you don't take any measures, and you already have, and that means that everything can be corrected, then your fate could be subjected to corrections from the generational lineage of your husband which of course directly relates to the females in his line. So what happened to the women in his family? Why do they have such an unenviable fate? My experience tells me that it is most likely a certain energetic damage, most likely related to a curse. A curse of the female line. There is, of course, something that caused it. You can't curse someone without a reason. And it would be best if your relatives find the courage and energy to get to their original source of the above-mentioned effects. Usually, these things happen when a woman causes harm, undeserved harm, to another woman destroys her family, takes the husband out of the family when there are children. That is how the offended woman has a right to curse. It is usually the homewrecker, the other woman, who gets cursed, as well as her kin up to a certain generation, depending on the intensity of the hatred she feels. Usually, it all happens and manifests exactly this way. Failed family life, illegitimate children, and that is in the best case. Usually there are bad female ailments or cancer, and let's call it a loss of social status, such as prostitution, addictions, in women, particularly in women. Males, as a rule, are usually not too affected by this. Although it does happen that men in such families especially if they have a weak consciousness, raised by such cursed, tortured women, once grown, automatically choose a wife of the same kind. Your husband seems to have managed to avoid this, and that is his great luck, although you do intuitively, and rightfully so, fear for your son. Because, well, good, your husband got lucky with you, but how about your son? There is hope. Because if you would have had a girl, I would tell you to start worrying right away. It is a bit easier with a boy, because as you see, the curse does not spread onto the male branch. But there is a vulnerability. There is a certain recessive gene which can perhaps, under certain circumstances, make him choose a woman with a similar fate or similar informational vulnerability, same as the woman in his father's line. What can you do? Sit down with your female relatives and get to the information. Figure out what happened in the fourth and the fifth generation to the woman of your husband's family. Let them tell you this story. It is better to know than not to know. By talking about it,
The responsibility will be, so to say, redistributed amongst all women, meaning that information won't be concealed any longer, it will come to light and won't be as heavy. And then altogether you can think about what can be done in order to correct it. Each one, of course, according to their own tradition. Christians will turn to prayer, pagans will turn to their forces, settling the issues their ways, such as coming to an agreement on how this all can be redeemed, because a curse, an insult, can be redeemed. Understandably, it's possible that it will remain unknown who specifically should redeem you. But the forces could provide you with clues on what can be done in this world in order to resolve this issue. For example, people plant trees, adopt children from orphanages, start up some sort of animal rescue. There are many things. Sometimes gods give you tasks that have no apparent correlation to the issue. For those who turn to the Christian Church, the mechanism is quite simple. Christianity redeems your debt for you. The Gregory redeems your debt, releasing you from this karma. But it never remember that will never do it for free, meaning that eventually it will ask for payment, and the redemption question will be back on the table. And it simply will tell you what needs to be done. And the cost will include additional interest, because Christianity is created based on the Judaic matrix. There, nothing is for free. And they too will get their interest, with your time, your fate, your rights, meaning that which is valuable there. Again, you will be doing this all together. And especially not just you as an individual. It is understandable that you are an interested party, but to take on the sin of that folk, it's just unreasonable. Now, regarding the child, the child needs protection, no doubt about it. The husband needs protection as well. Cleanse and set a protection, whether using runes or elements, whatever is that you can do. Next, you need to understand that the boy, the boy that is left without a connection to his skin, he will need support. This support can come from a good, substantial, egregorial system. Even though they are getting weaker now, still some key aspects still function, and it would make sense to utilize them. For example, statehood's potentiality will not fall apart tomorrow, meaning that it certainly will fall apart eventually, the statehood principle is on its way out the door, but there is certainly some time left that will allow you to lean on it. This means that interaction with the government, government service, or other closer contacts with the statehood principle in particular will be able to provide protection. The field of science is a winning option. If one goes into the sciences, or in general becomes a professional in a certain field, the professional egregor will protect better than anyone else. Maternal protection, without any questions. While you are alive, you will be protecting your child like the mama bear. Here, you can call on Mother Earth, call on the Erinis as the guardians of the motherly right. You are in your right to do that. A mother who protects her child is always right by definition. There are no other variables. And while he is little, until a certain age, until he is married, for example, or until he swears allegiance to the state, you will always be responsible for him, and hence in your right to protect him. Regarding your husband, here I would actually suggest you protect your husband as well, because he is just as vulnerable, and if it hits him, it will be a legitimate hit. If with your child you are able to protect him on the mother-right basis, you won't be able to protect your husband that way, and he will have to do it himself. I will have the same recommendations for him. To seek protection from the government egregor, or a professional egregor. Trying to go for a high degree of professionalism in some field. And that, colleagues, concerns absolutely everyone. Since the egregorial system is thinning and soon will be just a set of general instruments that you can put to use without any preconditions, you have to understand who is coming to the forefront, who is becoming higher than anyone else, the professional egregor.
The professional egregorial level is becoming higher than all others. Within the professional egregorial level, compared to the egregors of the usual range, there is a rule stating that there is no such thing as collective thinking. There is no collective feeling. There is always only one single individual mind at work. That is why, when on this level you cannot become a collective professional, impossible. Only one individual and only the best. So if you want to be stable in the world, become a professional in a field that you work in, or the field that you plan going into. It doesn't even matter what field it is, the most important thing is that you become the best at it. The best locksmith, the best mechanic, the best economist, the best lawyer, just the best in your trade and that is how you become victorious. So with your family problem, colleague Victoria, I would suggest that you recalibrate your attention towards professionalism in particular and orient your son and your husband in that direction. Since it happened that way that you are the head of the family and are responsible for them. And of course, get rid of generational negativity. As I already told you, don't carry it all on your shoulders. Get your female relatives to tell their story, to give all the information, all that happened without conceit. Revealed information can be counted as a job half done. The rest are technicalities. Информация проявленная. Считайте, что половину проблемы вы уже решили. А дальше уже там дело техники.